someone's getting a haircut. Let's go see. happy when you're all queen. everybody or good day or wherever you are uh, we are at the glorious home of mr. Greg Gill today for a very cool reason uh, yeah because we can yeah we, we yeah. can but today we're gonna feature a, a very interesting vehicle that was owned by um, well it's owned by Roger Cervic but it was also in the property uh, in the hands of Sid Mead uh, my very good friend who passed away not recently after his retirement but uh, uh, you're you're contemplating some things with this car well, yeah, this car lived with Sid and Roger uh, for the past 17 years, and it was very special to them. And uh, the first thing I'm excited about is that we're going to go down there and see it. We're going to travel down there in another cool Lincoln. We're seeing the Mercury, the 57 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser, which is just a fantastic, futuristic. You're not even going to believe the details on this car. It's just crazy. It's hard to believe that that was actually a normal car that you could buy. It's a buy. normal car you could buy. Yeah. It people did it was, a, it was well it wasn't a normal car but it was an available car that's right, right. that's right but right. it was also the car that was the primary vehicle that always inspired Sid to be a car designer right and you'll recognize you'll, you'll see his work you know his work you'll recognize the details yeah. uh, and one of the cool things here is where we're gonna see it is at their house you'll notice the trees I'll make sure fireball does it that appear in Sid's art they're uh, Lombardi poplar that's trees right. That's right. and uh, big tall cedar trees. Yeah. And uh, we photographed this car sometime against that when we did stills. Cool. It's really cool. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go hang out. Her. We're going to take it for a spin though, right? Well, we're going to take it there. We're just going across the Rosewall. We're going to drive the 56 Lincoln to go to their house. To the Mercury. Yeah. And then we're going to drive the Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right.
uh, there's a lot of room for you back there, Greg. Listen, this is awesome with the rear window down. I really just followed that. Beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, and we're just wandering through my neighborhood now. Yeah, we're uh, we're in the uh, undisclosed. Wave to my uh, neighbors. Pasadena location. Okay. Hi, neighbors. Cute dogs. <laughs> uh, and you, we are driving a 1957 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. That is correct. Wow, it's it's quite stunning. And how long have you had this car? I've had it since 2005, so mm -hmm. about 15 years. And, and when you guys uh, originally bought it, I mean, I know that, that this was one of the cars that, uh, if not the car that really inspired Sid uh, originally to become a designer and a lot of things. It was. Um, but, you know, for you, what was, what was your passion about this, uh, this vehicle? Were you excited for him or was it something that you wanted? Well, when I bought it, I was 57 years old. And I had hearkened back to the days when I was nine years old when this car first came out. Yeah. And my uncle bought one just like this and brought it home for Christmas, brand new. And I thought that was the ultimate Christmas present. <laughs> and I just, right. the opportunity came for me to buy an old car and to uh, join the club and get into my passion of car designs and and boys that played with big toys and yeah yeah old now cars. You, you I went picked this car it's interesting this car is so unique in that it's uh, it's hard to believe that it was something that you could buy off the showroom floor. It was almost like a concept car. It was almost like a concept car. In fact, there's aspects of this car that were taken right off of show cars yeah. in the automotive, uh, autoramas and the um, the futuristic models that they would put in the car shows. Right, right. They would put concept cars in there. People love those bird pokers that are yeah. on this windshield and it has really no functional value as bird pokers but they look cool so they've never poked any birds at all nope no not to, to my day. knowledge i don't think that's good that's, that's good speed. you know for those of you that that understand that concept cars are, are simply experiments for design language and then they take parts of those things and they add them onto production cars a lot of time it, it, it can be disappointing because a lot of the concepts that come out are quite beautiful and then the production doesn't look like it right but in this car uh in this case uh, it was very similar to a lot of the concepts that they had, and it was a very successful design. Yes, the year that Mercury tried to make itself different from Ford and different than Lincoln completely. Mm -hmm. And they ended up using a lot of aspects of Ford truck right. in order to make it unique. Because every other year, Mercury had either been a big Ford or a small Lincoln. Yeah. In 1957, 59, Mercury was its own body shop. Yeah. And this was really when the and at a time where they were going from the round bulbous design language to this flat pancakey type of low slung streamlined cars. Well, it was kind of an era of man's private rocket ship yeah. rather than a, a car. They were yeah. they had tail fins, they had chrome. Yeah. They Greg, had Greg is feeling that right colors. now in the back. They I'm had 
it was a fun time. Mm -hmm. It was a very fun time. Yeah. And well, it reflected itself in the cars and the music and the, the close of the day. We're gonna get lost, right? Because there's no way to know where the heck we're going out here. It's all these tiny little streets. Well, well this is not this car good. barely fits on these little streets. <laughs> Well, when you live here, you find out it's really very simple. It's a grid that's been twisted because of the Arroyo. Yeah, people have are. called me that, a grid that's been twisted. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Immensely, mm -hmm. but it's uh, extra to me now. Yeah. And so, uh, so basically, what uh, Roger's saying is that the car is now going up for sale. Yes. And um, it's a very unique uh, vehicle, not only because of its history, but that it belonged to you and Sid for many years. Yes. And you guys enjoyed it for uh, quite a long time. Um, it's in in good shape. It's in great shape, shape, but it's been sitting yeah. a lot. Of, it's because I haven't got the time to spend with it right. and play with my toys or, yeah. or keep it up. That after 15 years, it hasn't received a lot of mileage. Yeah, right. I haven't had the chance to take it anywhere. So that well, is something that's not good for cars. Cars yeah. need to be driven. Right. They need to be used, and they need to be run around. This one has not been used like it should, so yeah. it will take yeah. some uh, updates with sure. all of the... Uh, but it's you know so it's forth. it's a it's a car that of of some historical significance. Yes, uh, okay. and it was very milestone. unique. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, if this might be something of interest to you guys, uh, uh, spread the word. Let people know that it's for sale. Uh, you can contact Greg Gill back here. It will get a lot of attention. Yeah, and uh, we're just gonna keep driving because I know we're lost. <laughs> uh, we're lost. <laughs> yeah. Somebody would like to have this fine automobile. Oh, it's quite beautiful. How would they get in touch with you? Uh, Greg Gill, you can call me or text me, 626-798-7750. And very shortly, this will be up on the Greg Gill Company Facebook page. Right. Uh, you can find us there. Yeah, and if you happen to win the lottery, at least they have your number also. So that's good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you just won it just by being able to ride in the back of this car. I totally did. <laughs>